And the crude, the raw question then in that is sometimes there are difficult power relationships within that. If there's a director, mm. uh, a musical director, a designer, a singer, yeah. I mean, some may wish to collaborate and others may wish to crush. I don't know. So how do you feel your way forward? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I've never, I've never, there are certain, the only time I actually think that I've found, there's a very strange thing that happens in the theater. It's time pressure because you're always up against this time pressure and there's a kind of level where people get to a state of panic um, where they feel like they can't take on anymore. And, and that's where you get into a lot of difficulty. Um, so because we're all working under this deadline and I do the same thing, everybody does the same thing. You get to a certain point where you've altered what you're doing and you've allowed it to be as fluid as possible. And then there's, at some point you have to actually um, get to a more concrete stage in order to just get something on the stage. So, so that sort of collaborative process is is always a struggle because certain people are at different stages of the process so you're always sort of having to gauge somebody else's stage so you know an actor might not be there yet um, or uh, a singer might have a kind of fear around a certain aspect of what they're doing that's holding them back physically say or Everybody has their sort of, so in a way you have to be able to always gauge other people's level of comfort while you're all working together. And then somehow you kind of create this thing together. Um, and what do you do when the singer says, I'm not going to wear that dress? <laughs> you know, and they kind of, do you know, I mean, you know, sometimes it's very difficult. Sometimes it could just be uh, that they physically have a... Uh, um, an insecurity about mm -hmm. the way they look, and so they um, they refuse to wear something. On, and, you know, and that's always really difficult to deal with. You know, I have a much easier time dealing with an actor when they don't want to wear something because it doesn't. It's not. The, it's not right for the character. Right. I find it very, very difficult to um, try to mm, sometimes in the. Th in the world of opera, which is a, you know, it's not um, so much now, but it maybe even 10 years ago, you were, you were trying to kind of make somebody look better than they actually look. Um, so in the practical sense, what do you do when she says, I am not wearing that? I'm sorry, Michael, you're a lovely designer, but I'm not wearing it. Well, no one's ever said that. <laughs> so there were people who have said, you know, Michael, I need a little bit more here, you know, Michael, a little bit more here. And so you kind of then have to do a lot of uh, sort of, you know, you more work, more work on kind of trying to get across what you're trying to get across. And it's a co again, it's a collaboration because ultimately they have to go out on stage, those people who are these performers um, who are incredibly talented. I mean, singers who are doing this very difficult job of carrying their instrument in their body. They have to keep in contact with the conductor at every single moment of the very long performance. And they have to sing perfectly and they have to kind of hold on to a performance. And I mean, you know, if you've ever obviously you've been on the stage. So it's with you know, singers. instead of you know, it's incredible being on you know, it's impossible. Half the time you don't know what you're doing. And, you know, you're on one side of the stage and you think, oh my gosh, I should be on that side of the stage. And, <laughs> you know, it's like, and you're singing and you're sort of kind of caring. It's really, it's very, very difficult what they do, the juggle of what they do, because it's, it is a, a, like playing a, a fine instrument and having to emote at the same time. It's very difficult. Um, so I... I, I, back to your question, I think I try to, you know, f satisfy their needs and make them feel comfortable because I think that's a big part of, you know, your job as, as a costume designer. I don't really do costumes all that right, much. Right. I don't really design costumes that but much But if you've anymore. been talking to a director for, you know, for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks about a certain play and then you turn up with some sketches and whatever and they go, no. Mm. 
um, yeah. you just say, well, fine, we'll park those and you go and you start again or? Yeah, I think, you know, I think if you're, if the sketches are inappropriate because the character is not, you haven't achieved what you want in the character or you get, a, you get a, you know, kind of physically what your costume sketches look like on the person is not right. Of course you have to adapt to that. I mean, it's, you know, these are, these are you know, they're sketches, they're, people you know it's a completely different world um, and what do you make of a, of a theater set up whereas uh, you will design in September and four months later is rehearsals uh, and then a month after that the rest of the actors will be cast and then uh, four months after you submitted your designs they start rehearsal what do I make of the that sort of process yeah. of that elongated thing of well you just uh, you describe designing when yeah. Actors are in rehearsal with director, but if you reversed it, like many theaters here, mm. the designs are in before the actors are cast. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, that's something you just have to do with opera. It's, you know, you're designing something a year in advance, um, and you become more and more locked into it as you get closer and closer to the time that you have in the theater because your time in the theater is so short. It sort of it works in relation to... Um, how much time you're actually given in the theater. I mean, if you're given more rehearsal time and more, uh, uh, more theater time, you can actually be a little bit more relaxed about your design and allow things to take place in the rehearsal room because you have reaction time. But if you have no rehearsal time and no, no theater time, you have to actually be quite careful about what you're going to build and what you're going to do. And you have to think about it in advance. You really have to plan in advance and then <laughs> what you try to do is to, you know, depending on what you're doing, is you, you try to build in uh, a certain level of, um, what would be the right word, it's a certain level of freedom within the design um, so that maybe certain things can change and alter. I mean, I recently worked on um, um, A Dog's Heart, which is a new opera which I did in Amsterdam with Simon McBurney, who runs Complicite who I worked with on other productions and you know he when we normally work together everything it takes place in the rehearsal period so you know the set is designed alongside while the actors are developing the perf developing the script um, so I'm working in another room at watching what they're doing coming back and forth and I'm sort of developing the design while they're doing the thing and then at some point you just have to build it because otherwise you're not gonna have anything on stage but I recently did this opera with him and so opera has a completely different structure because you have to design something so far in advance so um, so that was you know the that was the opposite way of working for Simon and he wasn't used to this idea of pre-planning something so what we tried to do was to build a design that had the ability to um, uh, um, change and move and adjust to the process once he began rehearsals so we created a kind of structure in which the rehearsals of the opera could sit within and that in fact I mean in a, to, on can you some give level, me an example uh, how do you mean it was flexible in what well way? it was actually it was a very difficult process and I, 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 I went through about maybe 10 Cami how many models did we make for that we made like 10 models for um, the project how many? Which is about 10 maybe six seven real versions six six or seven versions six or seven Anyway, we did all these different versions, and I, uh, none of them ever worked. And it's all sort of the whole. This design. is before rehearsal started. This is just before the design was handed in. And anyway, we handed in quite late, and then, um, and, and then we sort of changed it all at the last minute. It wasn't sort of working, and but it was a very interesting process because, in the sense that through this period of submitting design after design to Simon, us working together, um, both of us became closer and closer to what was essential in the piece, what, were, what we really needed. Um, Sorry, when you submitted a design and it, wasn't, it didn't work or was accepted, uh, you mean the theatre said, no, we don't have the budget, or you mean Simon went, 
no, I don't think so. Yeah. No, it was Simon, Simon would said, say, no, no I don't think that's so. not quite working, <clears throat> I'm not sure. And then, and this was, a, I would go over to fly to London for a weekend and then do a thing and present a thing and then come back and then do another thing for two weeks and then go back and then present a thing and then come back here. And, and finally we did settle on a design and then we have, we had what, what the Amsterdam opera, they have this incredible, well, a lot of operas in opera houses in Europe and theaters too in Europe have what's called a bow proba which is, means uh, a work try on stage. And you basically build a set out of plastic and paper and they put it up and, and um, so they did. They did a sort of mock-up of the design that we had sort of agreed upon and we looked at it on stage and... And how far are you from rehearsals at this point? Um, that was uh, about four or five months four or five months in advance. Um, and for opera, that's tight. They still haven't built the set, so it's just all made of pa paper and plastic. Might have been, yeah, it was four or five months. I mean, I was in the middle of another project. And um, and anyway, so we put this thing on stage and and I could sort of like, Simon was sitting in the auditorium and I could sort of see that he was, <sighs> there was something like, it's like as if, he wasn't enjoying what he was looking at. And, and uh, you know, and that's one of those sort of situations where you think, oh no, I mean, you know, I've been on this thing for, you know, submitting designs for six months. I keep on going back and forth. And, um, and your heart sinks and you think, but and because inside you think, well, I don't like it either. Um, really? There's something, but maybe it's okay. Um, and you kind of were, you know, so, and then, so I called him the next day and I said, you know, well, what did you think about that? He said, well, I don't know. And it was partly because I was led down routes that were dead ends on this thing. And, um, you know, Simon led me down, down, you know, dead end routes and I led myself down dead, dead end routes. Um, when you... And, and anyway, so then the design I started to talk to him and the design this started to basically kind of unravel like some terrible sweater where you're sort of, you know, you're pulling one thread and just the whole thing went, and there was, you know, nothing left. And um, so then we went back to it and he came here to Toronto and we sat down and, you know, because we had this knowledge between us of all of these different tries, we were able to actually kind of work quite quickly and then we came up with a design that actually was incredibly flexible, which was a kind of structure which held a wall that moved in all sorts of different directions and lifted up and we could project on. And all the things that we'd been talking about came and uh, coalesced in this design.